Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 14. This is day seven. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and I had so much fun with this project pack. Uh, we had such beautiful uh, tools to work with, and we're going to use pretty much all of them in this particular spread on the, in the book. And the, the uh, quote we're going to work with is, art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Thomas Merton. And it's it's very emotional piece for me, and hopefully this will come through in our in our designs. So we got all of these beautiful pens, and I'm gra grateful for this beautiful booklet that Molly designed. We can um, just start right out. Here we go. I kind of press this in so it'll stay down. Yeah, you can fold this back so it lays yeah, flat. Flat lays. Yeah, flat. It's, do that that thing that everybody tells you not to do with the right. book, right? We're going to do a, a tangle called ding splat or ding splats with a Z. We usually refer to it in in multiples. Right, and it, it's sort of if you imagined a tangle dropped from some height onto the onto your tile or your paper, how it would splat on it. It would explode on right. the page, yeah. So, so we're going to give you a little bit of a, um, a minute to see how this goes together before we, uh, uh, before we put it on the paper, on, on the booklet. So you can see it's very technical. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter how many loop-de-doops you do. And it doesn't matter what you call these loop-de-doops. I, think, I think it sounds kind of fun. Uh, but that's the, the beginning of it. You just do as many loops as you want, and as long as you can connect the line at the end, you're, you're you, golden. I, so I'm going to fill the whole background with a number of these that fit around the lettering, and, and you can see that I'm just having fun. And then the, the only place I have to really stop and just ease in is when we get gets and together. what pen are you using? This is the gray Jelly Roll pen. Thanks, Rick. And I'm going to, I'm sort of going to, put a bunch of these in the background and you don't have to worry about you know whether they balance or not because we're going to make it balance we're going to mm. make it work so you can see here I'm, I'm thinking I want to kind of go in there without going on, on top of the other one but you're going across the binding there yeah and just sailing around a light touch as we always say on this I go I go clockwise but it's not a, a necessary thing see here I'm going real slow and, and have it meet. And that's, a f that's actually a fun thing to do, is to explore doing clockwise or counterclockwise and yeah. uh, seeing how that's different. And I see you thinking about where the next one is going to go there. Yeah. Or just I'm imagining gonna, I'm going to tuck it in right there. And it went off the page. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> or at least off the camera. <laughs> right. Oh, no, it didn't go off the page. And yeah. you can go in and, and sort of uh, add some love to it if, if your pen didn't do exactly what you wanted right. it to do, which is fine. You know, go with it. These are just tools. We use the tools as best as we can. And another interesting thing is you you look at these uh, something as as you're working on it that you say, oops, but when you go back and see the finished tile, almost always you, you can't even find the place that you say, oh, maybe I should start over. Yeah, see, I you got know. a little bit of a, a smear there, but I, it's not going to show. It's going to be fine. It's and, be you know, fine. it's like one stroke at a time, but it's you, you don't get to do it over, but you can always make something beautiful of it. Right. So be aware that... Uh, the jelly roll pens don't dry as f quickly mm -hmm. as the microns. Um, just keep that in the back of your mind. You don't have to obsess over it or anything, right. but just in, you know, keep it. And I think I'm going to put one more over there, I think. Turn your tile if you need to. I'm going to tuck it in here. And that's a very famous early Zentangle principle of turning your tile or your work surface because in Zentangle, there is no uh, up or down or left or right. We're looking strictly as patterns here and how they play together. So you can see there's a, 
quite an explosion of ding mm-hmm. splats, which is really cool. So th- we're going to take this same jelly roll gray, which I'm, I've fallen in love with, and I'm going to aura the inside section of each splat. Carefully, you're going to do this much slower than what you did before. And you'll notice Maria's turning her book for each one. And the reason for that is just watch my hand. My hand is always in the same place. I'm not turning my hand upside down. I'm not turning it to an awkward, uh, hard-to-draw position. I'm, I'm capable of turning these things. And, and once in a while, if you're you know working on a wall or something like that or a painting that's too big to move around, uh, you, you, you might don't, you don't turn the wall. You don't turn the <laughs> wall so much, and, and you might have to you know figure out what to do there. But for the most part, my hand is in the same position. And one of the benefits is that you're using the same muscles when you make a similar stroke. So even if your your line is, you know, has a particular character of steadiness or unsteadiness, it will have a consistent character. Right. So well, we're going to aura this again, but but a bigger aura so that it leaves a space here. And we're going to do some coffering, uh, which is really one of my favorite things to do in a space. It just it just makes it look so much more sophisticated, you know, like we really know what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> when we're really just having fun. Well, and coffering is auraing. Right. And then connecting corners. Look how cool is that that right. in such a, a simple uh, thing to do. An aura that you're going to see is, is such an important part of Zentangle. It, it, it creates things that you just don't anticipate. So just do, this is the essence of pattern, is repeating the same steps in each central spot or in each one. Yeah, we're going to basically do the same thing in every ding splat, and we're going to create sort of a wallpaper design mm. Um, to, to background this. I don't think there's going to be any focal point. It's just going to be uh, wallpaper. A pattern. A pattern. Just for the sake of the fun of it. Mm-hmm. So we can find ourselves and lose ourselves. At the same time. At the same time. So now I got my Micron uh, PN, the black, and we're going to go around a nice tight aura on here just to add some beautiful detail. I think this is a really great example in this moment right here of of the difference in three different aura spacings on this ding splat and the different impact it has. Right. That's a really great example. So some tangles will keep a, a similar space throughout and on this one, you can see the impact of, of different spacing. So I'm going to k- encourage you to turn your book around, turn and turn and turn. Sometimes I don't because I don't want you guys to get a little dizzy as <laughs> I'm doing it. But um, take, take your time and make the book accommodate your hand. Mm. That's a really good thing. Mm-hmm. That's a really great idea. In- instead of us accommodating to something outside, you can adjust this to you. So you can see we're going to do another aura, but this aura is aura. See that line I just poked out? That's the line we're going to aura each time between the loops, between the loops. And this is with the gray jelly roll again. I like how we're exploring using different color pens as part of the pattern in different elements. The gray and the black show up much more uh, uh, distinctly in person. Mm. So when you're working on your book, you'll see it uh, a little better than on this video. And so we're adding these beautiful connectors to add uh, a three-dimension or a gravitas to this very dainty start. Well, I think this particular thing splat was dropped from quite a height. I think so, too. I think that it splatted quite a bit. But you you want it to have strength after this. You don't, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there are some times you want it to be delicate and lacy, but this one, we we want a little strength in it so that we can go back in and add tangles within there. 
and that's a whole other element of, of uh, tangling is just like we create spaces with the pencil as we make a string, the tangle itself creates spaces. Right. So now we're going to uh, add a, a, a tight aura around the loops, like the end of the loops. Connect them to those th lines that we just put in. Again, it's going to add strength to uh, your original uh, zinc ding splat. And you'll notice something here that's a, uh, it's not really a, a rule in Zentangle, but it's a common uh, feature is that a lot of, t most times the lines don't cross. It's right. like part of the whole holobot, like even on that letter she's going behind. Uh, sometimes when we lay out a grid tangle, or there are definitely tangles that where the lines cross, but you'll see in this whole page so far, no line has crossed another line. Well, that's not quite true. Oh, well, in the ding splat itself. In the ding splat itself, itself it did. It did yeah, yeah, so that's that's an example. Yep, you're right. There's always a uh, uh, exception an to exception. the rule. Yeah. But the, the original ding splat uh, lines, to me, it's almost like a string. Yes, yeah. I think that you could do a ding splat line like that as a, a, as a string. Splat. We'll have to try that. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, next time, I'm going to try yeah. it that way. So you're getting the, the hang of this, is that what we do on one, we do on all of them. And I think that's one of the ways to lose yourself and find yourself, because once that ding splat is established, that first set of loops, then you just get to go into this, I don't know, zone, zone or, is a good one, or yeah. place where, okay, pick something to do next, and then do it to each one. And once that choice is made, then it's just sort of, uh, you, you get to relax into the each stroke, not thinking about, oh, well, what should I do next? So here's that gray jelly, jelly roll again, and we are just going to re, reiterate that uh, aura that we had made before with the jelly roll. Restate. Yes, that's a good, better mm. word. Or resonate, resonate. Resonate, that's a good one, yeah. And that's sort of like what an echo or an aura is. It's like a, a echo or a resonation in in physical, like uh, rings on a pond when is you throw in. Is resonation a, it a is word? Now. It is now. <laughs> it is now. Oh, look what I just did. I made a loop. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> How funny is that? And I'm guessing you're deciding on the moment what stroke to do next, right? right. So now we're working with the uh, PN, the black PN. We're going to add some, uh, let's see, what should we call this? It's sort of like a crescent moon, but with, with triangles. Nice and black. We add some intense color here. So we've got a nice solid to balance out all these lines. Right. And we're going to put those in that, uh, it's kind of sitting on that line that we just, just created. And you can see how cool this is. And even though it's kind of pointy, it's, it's kind of adding a nice um, uh, complement to these loopy uh, ding splats. Well, this is a, a trifecta of, of contrast. So you've got a, a contrast in shape. It's, it's this very straight and angular shape. I'm very amazed to see you create that. That's really beautiful. Yeah. And it's solid compared to all the line work. Right. Right? And it's, 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 uh, it really has a, a nice contrast there. And it sets them off a little more, you mm. know? Right. Even the tiny, tiny ones. But don't forget those. That makes such a difference. Mm. So we're going to aura those beautiful triangles that we just put in. And Maria's using her PN. You can tell which pen we're using just by looking at it. And if you decide to use a different pen or do a That's different fine. line, the yeah. principle here is 
whatever step you choose, just apply it to everyone. See it through. Yeah. yeah. Don't, it, there, there are no mistakes. It's just going to be different. And different is wonderful. That's really what we want you to eventually attain is the mm -hmm. ab ability to let yourself do something different. And than what then you've ever done. as you lose yourself in finding that, yeah. you find yourself as you, right? Yeah, yeah. Look how pretty the, how that defines. What that does is uh, make it look like it belongs there. Mm -hmm. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do another aura. Aura is our friend. We use it all the time. When in doubt, when you're sitting there and we don't know what to do, put an aura somewhere. And the minute you get your pen going, it's like yes. uh, it's like a writer's block. You have to just put a sentence down. Even if you cannot not keep it, just write something. And a lot of times, creating anything. So you can use Zentangle, creating a Zentangle pattern to start another creative flow that may be stuck. So all you need to do is, is get that going. Right. This is coming together nice. Yeah. So you can see they're, they're all overlapping now and they're, they're meeting each other in a holobar fashion. Can you believe you drew this? This is right? really cool, right? It's starting out with such uh, uncertain uh, splats there, right. and now they're very defined and uh, have have character to them. So we're gonna aura those in, inside those loops, and then do a little. Co it's kind of coffering, but like just a, to hold yeah. it there, like a balloon. No sharp edges. Yeah, like a balloon with a string. One place where a miter is. It just fits in with the coffering on the inside. Right. And again, you, you decide to do something, and then you just go and find every space and do the same thing in it. So if you wanted to uh, paint a ho or draw on a whole wall, mm. you could do dink splats on a whole wall. And every day you went on the phone, you could just put your headphones in and talk and decide that. Right. Because you, you know what you're going to do. It's going to be the same thing on every one of them. Right, right. Wouldn't that be fun to do a whole yes. wall of hand-drawn wallpaper? I'm going to do that. Okay. If we had a blank wall in the house, that's true. <laughs> we don't have any blank walls in the house. But if I did, this would be it. This would be it. And it's there's, it's fun just finding each little last one and putting it in. I, I like looking at what this looks like now because when we uh, go to. Uh, shade it, it, it takes on a whole other character. Right. So back with our gray jelly roll, we're going to insert some uh, perk mm. uh, inside these. That's it's, it's what I like to do in there because it gives it this, you know, unexpected uh, uh, organic mm -hmm. look like it's growing in there. Like, like when you open up pea pods or something. And you can see how Maria nestles those together and then fills in if there are any little gaps. All right. Turning the tile. So you can see, you probably wouldn't have to turn the tile, but it's so much easier for me to do them one on top of the other. Mm -hmm. and, and once you have a rhythm going, that's what you want. You want that rhythm in Zentangle. Right. Yeah, and that is part of the rhythm of keeping your hand in the same place and moving your world to, to what's comfortable for you. As soon as we say it, you do yeah. it the other way. <laughs> I know. I figured that they're, they're a little tipsy from the turning. So we got that part done. What are we going to do now? So still with that pen. I can see you looking for the one to start. So now we're going to put some uh, detail in these triangle shapes. And what I decided to do something a little bit different. And we're going to look at this. And, and if you have your triangle facing down, pointing down, you're going to do the right side of it. So each one on the right side, you can see how they're pointing down, is going to have like a a shadow type line, but it's going to be a detail, almost like an engraving or an etching. Like a, a series of straight auras. Right. And 
And this is another really good use of having a tight aura around that triangle because it allows the those straight lines that Maria's putting in now to stand off from that and, and really be obvious. Right. And also keep the 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 solidness of that triangle. Nice little light, dark, and in an intermediate contrast. Again, it, you, you see the gray and black a little more detailed in, in real life and in, in, on your tile or on, on your book than you see it here. Look at that. Oh, it's coming along, huh? Yeah. So those intermediate tones. Okay, going to go with the green pen now. So with this beautiful green, turquoise, whatever you want to say. Right. We're going to do some spirals, some printemps, which will... The, the first one you put down is you can put anything down, and then you're going to start kind of close by because you want it to tuck behind the ones before it, have some uh, look, looking like three-dimensional printemps. Mm. Back, behind, go behind... I have a bowl upstairs that that's that's where I got that that pattern. As simple as it is, it was just a little bit different than putting spirals next right. to each other. Look at that; they're already three dimensional, coming right. back, coming at you from the center. So if you start in the center, that's the one that's going to stick up the most. And then just layer each one, and it draws behind when it comes there. Oop, and it comes out the other side. Right. So if you start going around the edges and go to the middle, it'll reseed mm -hmm. in, right. in, in detail. And no rush. And I'm going counterclockwise on here, different than on when I was doing my, uh, my splat originally. And uh, these jelly rolls are fun because if you want to, you can uh, go over the other. They're opaque, and, and they cover other uh, uh, pen strokes if you want. If you so choose. If you chose. <clears throat> yeah. So just fill all those. Oh, we. <laughs> yes. You. <laughs> we. Nice, look at that. Coming along. So we're going to do this in the backgrounds, too, to add a, a consistency, a continuity of a design. So it's almost looking like uh, those ding splats had a hole in the middle. Right. Right? Or it contained these little... Uh, green spirals and when they broke it like leaked out all over the paper behind it. It too. could be it, that we, too. We don't really know yet. We don't. I think it could go either way. Mm. So you can see that uh, the types of things that we're doing are really simple and this is how you lose yourself if, mm. if you so choose uh, and you lose yourself so wonderfully and it can make all the happy thoughts come and maybe the not so happy ones recede or just giving a space where your focus is so intently on the stroke and with what i like to call re Ooh. reverence <laughs> did you see that <laughs> and and to let yourself do those little whimsies that come along that are right. inspired in the moment go for it that's my uh calligraphic flourishing just kind of trying to eat mm. eke out i do a lot of flourishing and the effect of this is that it's you know this is lifting up those uh ding splats and, and sh visually separating them from the from the background there it's pretty so neat. i'm not doing the whole background i'm i'm sort of incorporating it in the interstices mm. which is the spaces between things so the spaces between the uh, ding splats 
first I'm going to do all those places and then try to figure out how I want this to appear on the page after that. So the, I'm using wallpaper as sort of a, a, a general word because of the way it, it's constructed, but not the fact that it's going to be the same all over right. the same page. And so, yeah, go ahead. So I'm adding some uh, dots around where I don't plan to put uh, printer. I can see them eking out, but but not completely at a at a, mm, a pre-planned pace. You know, I'm put I'm placing them artistically. I'm I'm choosing. Look at that, it's like a bijou. One fell off. Uh-oh. Right? Yeah, like one fell off. <laughs> so the more you tangle, the more you, you know, find a inspiration when you're not thinking about what to do. Because I think there's this, this uh, opportunity to respond to the tile and you have sort of a communication with your creation like okay which direction does it inspire you to go next and then just trusting that you know it's it's a piece of paper it's, it's a okay. piece of paper and you can always do it again yeah but just the exercise of letting that exploration take place you know just because you explore something doesn't mean that's the, the way you're going to go but you get to explore it Ooh, now it's, my favorite. Now it's shading time. Putting the frosting on the cake. Yes. I love to shade. So we're going to uh, add some graphite around the uh, center portion. Not too much, just around that, that final uh, aura there so that it gives it depth. You can see all of ready. Just doing that. We haven't even hit the, the tortillon yet, and yet... And and the key here is is leave some unshaded. Right, so that they peek out. See those ones in the middle are already coming yeah. out at you, maybe a quarter of an inch more than mm -hmm. the rest of them. So getting some more contrast. Getting so yeah, we're going to do the same thing in each one of these. So the idea is, just like with the inks that we put down in each one, we're going to do the same with the graphite. Right. Uh, coming to life, it's awesome. Don't, you f don't forget, though, in order to have light, you have to have dark and, and vice versa. It can't be all light and all dark. It's got to have both. So now that we have done all of those, we're going to go into these coffered uh, lines, and we're going to put a little bit of graphite to the left of each section or right of each section if you choose. If one or Pick one or the other. I'm going on the left-hand side of that piece. I don't know what that shape. That piece of molding or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So this is an idea of shading as pattern, not shading as where's the light coming from. And I think I had decided distinctly to do it opposite to the triangles with the lines. Can you mm. see that? Oh, I, yeah. I could have done it the same, but right. you know, we I can do anything it. we want. Exactly. There are no rules, just uh, suggestions. And oftentimes, you know, we, we give you these videos as suggestions of right. what to do, not distinct, yeah, you gotta do that. It's just, well, you could do this, and, and you could even do that. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So. It's, it's the concept of, of uh, exploring and using this and creating these patterns as opposed to duplicating what Maria's done or anybody see, has done. You can see that I'm taking uh, and drawing the, the graphite to the center. And if, and if, if you are you know, going for light and dark like a, like a shadow, that's where it would start to change. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that. That's really neat. How fun. So we're going to go around those splats um, and give it that same feeling that's that's in the in the center there. Right, lifting up. 
and this is part of the, the enjoyment of the patterning. And you'll see Maria's pencil tip is going towards. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, Rick is very definitive on, on his shading, but sometimes I'll, I, yeah. I mostly do it like that. And uh, again, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying not to do so much turning that you'll get seasick. But, but the idea is, is that you want to be able to see the edge of where you're going. At least that's what I have in, have in mind. But again, keeping some part light. Right? Nice. You can see, oh my, that's, by, by doing that, it gives it a different color, mm -hmm. right? All of, the only, um, oh my gosh, I, I love that. Right? Love that, look at, ooh, ooh. And then going further yeah. out, yeah. Yeah. It has a, a really nice effect of the, on the jelly roll. I didn't think that would happen, mm -hmm. but it it's actually it does nice things with the jelly roll. And this idea of, of layering the different shading as part of the pattern is really cool. Go in and give a little love. Anytime you, you know, you don't have to come and go and not go back. What are we going to do here? Ah, I'm going to go around. Sometimes when you redefine the lines that you've done, originally I had done it in the gray, but I must have decided that I wanted to stand out a little more. Well, I think you're, you're doing it, and we'll often go back over where the shading has been done because sometimes right. the graphite will like go over a previous line, and this is just increasing, or not just, but this is increasing the contrast And it's a subtle touch. I was just going to say exactly that. It's a subtle thing, but all these subtle things come together to make a more uh, sophisticated uh, composition. You know, and, and you, it's neat because she's doing some of them all the way, but not all of them all the way. Right. Nice. Go with your gut feeling. and uh, What's that? that's doing is giving a light on, on those lines as well. And it's sort of like exercising uh, a, a new set of uh, tools or skills or muscles or reflexes and, and trying something that you might not have done. And maybe that's what a lot of these project packs are, is to inspire to try new things and to be grateful even for when the exploration takes you in a place that, I don't think I'll do that again. Yeah, but you've learned something. You've totally learned something. You've learned something about what you like, about yourself, about art, and you may again revisit it at a later time. Everything, gratitude in everything. If you can start to feel, this is sad, sounds fitting. If you can start to feel grateful for your mistakes mm. and figure out, well, what can I do? What has that taught me? You can do it. You can just pull that into your life and, mm -hmm. and get over things that maybe would have made you a little bit more not feeling good about yourself. Or not wanting to try anything. That's true. You, you need to give yourself some space there. Look at this. I'm just put some little dots and some color in there. Is a great example of how the jelly roll can go over other inks. Yeah. But you want to, you know, th the black had a good time to dry there. Yeah. And also, these little dots are very liquid. You don't want right. to your, put your hand near them so they'll smear. So be careful with that. Look at that. They just add a little detail, yeah. tiny, tiny detail. You almost don't even see them. This was my original drawing when I was designing what we were going to do. And you can see it's a little bit... Uh, I hadn't done any green. I had done dots in the background instead of printant. Um, it needed some TLC, I think. But again, the principle of, of doing one thing and then repeating it everywhere. Right, right. I liked what the green did. It really brightened it. Yes, yes. That's beautiful. Wow, so uh, this was a great 
opportunity to lose yourself and discover yourself. So thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for for sharing. And uh, we will see you soon. Bye. Bye now.